Sometimes we need to open up additional ports on our virtual machines with, that are connected to Azure. So I'm going to click under Virtual Machines on my Azure test. And we see we're automatically put into the overview. And what I want to do is I want to port forward another port into this server. Let's say that I am adding a web server and I want to add HTTPS or port 443. So what I want to do is I want to go to Settings and click on Networking. Once we're in Networking, we see there's several different rules that have already been created. The bottom three are, were created by default, but it did prompt me for opening up Remote Desktop Protocol when I created the virtual machine. Remote Desktop Protocol allows us to remote into the server and get the desktop of the virtual machine from any location, or we could lock it down to a specific IP address. So if I click on Remote Desktop Protocol, we can see the way the rules are set up. So the source is any, and our choices are any, IP address, service tag, or application security group. Typically, the IP address is going to be the one that we go with. But if you don't choose any particular option, it will work with the IP addresses regardless. Under the source IP address site arranges, we see the internal IPv4 as well as the internal IPv6 address. So if we want, we can say, the source is going to be a particular public IP address. So I went to Google and I typed in what's my IP and we see this particular address. So I can go into here and paste that in. So now only my particular computer will be able to remote into it. Under the source port ranges, we see the star. Now that's just the default. That means that any particular source port will work. However, only the destination port will be the one that connects on the other side. So on the, let's say on the outside of the firewall, it will accept any port to come in, but on the inside, it's only going to accept 3389. So ultimately, it's going to only accept 3389, which is the default port for remote desktop protocol. Most people don't make any changes to this source port range, but you certainly can if you want. Sometimes by adding a source port range, it just breaks it. So it's better just to leave it with the asterisk. Destination, if we hit the drop down, we can choose any IP address, virtual network, application, et cetera, et cetera. And what we're going to say is this, since this is the remote desktop protocol into this particular computer, it's going to be the 10.1.0.4 address. But if we have an additional IP address on this particular virtual machine, say it's 10.1.0.5 or even 192.168, it will accept any of those. But just to keep it simple, we're going to just leave it as any. Under the destination port ranges, this is just TCP port 3389. You can add additional ports if you want, just by clicking the comma and adding any port number or port range. A range could be, for instance, 1000 to 2000. But of course, that wouldn't work for remote desktop, so we'll just get rid of that. Under protocol, we see any. TCP, UDP, or ICMP. ICMP is typically used just for pinging, so you can ping because by default on Windows 10 computers, it, the ping is turned off. However, on Windows Server domain controllers, it's turned on. But Windows Server member servers, again, it's turned off. So if you want to be able to ping and you don't have a domain controller that you're trying to ping, then ICMP should be turned on if you need to do that. UDP, that's typically used for gaming or anytime packets don't need to be assured that they've gotten to the destination. And you just want it to go as fast as possible. So it's okay for it to drop a few packets now and then. TCP is connection oriented, such as connecting to your bank account or to any other shopping site, any site that includes a certificate. Under action allow, this is an allow rule, but as you see under this deny inbound, that one is going to say denied. So I'm just gonna go ahead and not make any changes to that last rule. And we see it's denied right here. And the reason for that is if you don't have a deny, then you're going to allow a whole bunch more ports. And we don't want that. We also see outbound port rules. And by default, all of your outbound ports are going to be open. So we see any any is uh, allowed. And even though there's a deny at the end, it doesn't really mean anything because the rules at the top, which get applied in order, is allowing all outbound traffic. Here's application security groups. We don't have any of these right now, but if you'd like to create them, you can certainly do that. 
And we're not going to cover that in this video, but we'll cover it in an upcoming one. Load balancing is typically used for multiple different servers that have the same type of product on them. Say, say you have a web server, for instance, and you want to load balance because you're getting a lot of traffic that's coming into the one server. It's overwhelming it, so you can load balance that traffic to go to more than one location. And those devices both have the same information on them. Let's go back to our inbound port rules and add a new port rule. So I'm going to leave the source once again as any. I'm going to leave the source port ranges to asterisk. Destination is any. Now I'm going to choose the destination port range. Now you see here 8080 is in here. That's just a default number. I'm going to put in 443 because maybe I'm going to set up a new web server that uses secure traffic. I'm going to set the protocol to be TCP because that's what it is required. And I'm going to set the action to allow. And I'm going to change the name to be web. And under the description, I'm going to say SSL web traffic. And click add. And we can see that it's called web. And it is allowed. Now what's interesting is when you click on this, if we wanted to, we could have changed it to a basic rule. This actually is an advanced rule. So I click on basic and it cuts out a lot of that information. So we can simply put in the service name, the port range, a description, and the name, and that's it. And it'll know exactly what needs to happen. But if you need to have anything fancy, then you can certainly stay with the advanced rule. And if you change your mind, decide you no longer want it, you can click on the three dots and click delete. So that is how you can configure your firewall to allow port traffic in the Azure virtual machine. And of course, it also has to be allowed inside the virtual machine itself in the Windows firewall. So if it's allowed here but not allowed there, then you won't get anywhere. But we have other videos on how to configure firewalls in a Windows server.